Okay, the fallout from a Chinese spy balloon breaching U.S. airspace continues with conflicting reports now alleging similar occurrences under the previous administration. I asked Senator Hawley about it. He said there had been no briefing of Congress about that. You know, what can we believe? And what does this tell us about our military and the chain of command? And what did this, uh, this test from the China reveal about the Biden administration? Is, is this China probing to see what our resolve might be? Well, join me now to discuss this and more as FRC's Executive Vice President, retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, who spent the last four years of his 36-year military career serving as the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. He was also one of the original members of the U.S. Army's Delta Force. General, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tony. Good, good to, to be with you. Good to see you. All right. Let me ask you this question. I'm going to go and I asked uh, Senator Hawley about this just a few moments ago, but we have a statement last week from the DOD that said, oh, th this, uh, this kind of balloon activity has been observed previously over the past several years. The, the, the Trump administration says they heard nothing about this. So what's going on here? Yeah, well, first of all, I, if you believe that those incursions occurred, then you have to ask yourself, why was the leadership of this country not notified? And, and if they were not notified, then there needs to be an investigation into this. My personal view is that this did not happen, that uh, these uh, incursions that are alleged right now, based on what Mark Esperts testified to, uh, who was the previous Secretary of Defense, he said no one ever brought anything like this to him. So there is either something wrong in the Pentagon and the military structure to where the, the the generals are out of control or somebody is not telling the truth about this. Well, I mean, could it be General Milley? Maybe he picked up the phone and called the Chinese and said, hey, you got a balloon over here. What's it doing over here? Oh, that's just, uh, that, that, that they're just out there for a ride. It got caught in the winds and uh, blown over. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we saw with Milley in the Trump administration that was revealed after the Trump administration ended. That's right. And just for everybody's uh, memory, uh, you need to remember that uh, Milley called his counterpart in China and said, if our president makes any decision to launch a nuclear weapon, I'll, I'll get in touch with you. I'll let you know. So this is a guy that is, uh, first of all, untrustworthy. But secondly, uh, it, it's hard to understand what his agenda is. And, and I, therefore, I uh, think that somebody needs to look into this. There needs to be an investigation. Tony, this was this having this thing flying over America for seven days is a serious matter. It's a very serious matter. What if that thing had been loaded with an EMP right. capable warhead? Exactly. And it was at the right altitude if that if it had exploded up there, you didn't have to shoot so, it at anything, just exploded in the atmosphere. We, we lose half of our, our grid, so at least. So that's another question. Was this a probe? Was this a trial balloon, if you will, to see what America's responses would uh, would be? Tony, if, if you look at how the Chinese operate, I would say to you, there's no question this was a probe. They were uh, trying to see what our response time would be, what our actions were going to be, whether we were going to shoot it down or not. So I think that not only did we have uh, we compromised in terms of the information that they were able to glean by being right over at least three of our most important nuclear facilities, but also I think that uh, we have now shown them what our response time is going to be and how we're going to respond to this kind of thing in the future. And there will be more of these, Tony. I tell you that right now. There will be more of these. It may not be a balloon flying over Montana, but there'll be more of this same kind of stuff because this is just one more thing in a series of things. I mean, there's no question they've had ships off our coast, uh, outside of our territorial waters, but they've had ships off of our coast uh, observing and collecting intelligence and so I think that we have got to take this seriously and the Congress has to take it seriously and they have to hold somebody accountable for uh, what has happened here in the last six days. Well, 
clearly someone's not telling the truth, because if, in fact, this has not happened before the Pentagon just put out a statement saying that it had, if it has happened before, no one has told those in authority or the civilian leadership of the country. And so someone needs to be held accountable for that. I want to ask you a technical question, General Boykin. I know we've got the, the satellites, and the satellites are so precise that they can even read license plates off of cars. What could have been gained by this type of device over what they have in terms of their capacity with satellites? Well, they may have been able to get certain angles with a balloon that they can't get with the satellite. Satellites are much higher up. Satellites are in, in higher orbits, and, uh, and satellites are less maneuverable than a balloon like that, which could be uh, directed into places that you may not be able to see with a, uh, with a satellite. So I think that it's reasonable that they're using uh, everything that they have, everything that could give them an edge in terms of collecting intelligence against us. Is this a, is this a red line of sorts for a, a foreign adversary to cross over into our territory gathering sensitive intelligence? Yeah, Tony, my, as far as I am concerned, uh, when they got close to the Aleutian Islands, and uh, got it within our 12-mile uh, territorial waters, we should have knocked them out right then. Knocked them out. Knock them out in the North Pacific there. And uh, it would have been over with. This is going to happen again. And we better decide what we're going to do because we have miserably failed uh, on this first attempt here. All right. General Jerry Boykin, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Always great to see you. Good to be with you.